patients in terminal uh, stages will live some period of time. That is a period where uh, they are dependent um, on the family, friends, the community type of care during this uh, stage is called palliative care. So the family, friends and the community can take care of them so that the problems they have, the physical ailments like pain and other problems can be reduced with uh, medical management and a psychological and spiritual support to help them mentally be strong and uh, deal with the disease and fight the disease. If I am going to diagnose a terminally ill patient or I am going to diagnose a patient with no cure like cancer, like a motor neuron disease or a end stage liver disease or a heart failure, even though we have liver transplant other things, many will not be able to afford it. But they are not going to die the next moment or they are not going to die the next day. They are going to live for some more time. Some people live with AIDS and HIV for more than a decade. Some people live with cancer for more than a few years. So ultimately what we have to do is we have to take care of the symptoms. And just like WHO definition says, palliative care is a holistic approach of symptom control in terms of physical symptoms, in terms of emotional symptoms, psychological symptoms, spiritual concerns of the patient, not only of the patient, of the carers because we have seen that more than the patient sometimes the carer or the family is getting more stressed because they have to continuously deal with the, a sick patient for a quite a long time. So that both the patient and the carer should be equally managed and the symptoms are well managed, patients are given adequate knowledge and training of how to manage the symptoms then these patients can, they, the suffering can be reduced. The main thing here is suffering, if suffering can be reduced patient almost forgets the disease. And that is what palliative medicine teaches and that is what we practice under the name of palliative medicine and palliative care. With such diseases, uh, they stop earning and become a burden to their family. So with the relief of uh, symptoms and with palliative care, they can actually continue to be productive for whatever number of years they live. Terminally ill patients get some time to plan the rest of their lives and how they would like to end their lives, uh, whether they would like to go to hospital or die at home, whether they would like all the life support system at the last stages of their life or they do not want it, they, they will be more peaceful in dying at home. So all this planning can be done and if they have assets and other liabilities, they'll get some time to uh, sort out their social, financial issues, responsibilities and liabilities can be sorted out. They can make their will and they can die more peacefully. For diseases with no real cure, again what we focus on is improvement in quality of life. So we have to focus on getting our reactions to a particular disease properly in place. What I mean is say for example, if we have uh, a degenerative condition in our uh, joints, you know, which re severely restricts our mobility. Then we have to go for some, uh, we have to think or we have to ask the doctor whether there are any measures or any physiotherapy or anything which can help us to get on with our day-to-day -day activities. The more we feel crippled when we don't do even our basic activities like bathing, brushing and other things, the more we feel very despondent, the more we feel very uh, worthless and so on. So these kind of reactions often stem from uh, not planning or not uh, looking at those aspects. So if we can uh, break a disease consequence into various aspects, you know, okay, now this has affected my ability to work, fine, I'm not being productive, but at least can I take care of myself? At least can I look after a few basic things in my house? Then I'll feel better and then at least I'll be able to move and get, get uh, not depend on, you know, other people for my, at least my basic activities. So this is one strategy that we can all try. Patients themselves are most of the time and these stages of disease are incapable of going about from hospital to hospital and family may not have the resources to take such patients all the time to hospital. All hospitals do not provide palliative care. So running from hospital to hospital is definitely not a solution and it will add on to their stress, financial stress, psychological stress, uh, physically uh, also stressing uh, for caregivers. So what is the solution for this problem is community-based palliative care. The community-based palliative care is a concept which is uh, just in its infancy in India. Uh, in the state of Kerala, uh, we know palliative care has become a movement but uh, not in the rest of the country. So what society and the community needs to do is uh, 
get volunteers um, from all sections and all classes of the society, especially the young people who can have empathy for the patients and whatever time they can spare from their daily course, uh, even when they are going to school or for work, people do spend some time chatting, watching movies or in leisure. So that time can be spent in caring for the people uh, with such conditions, which uh, will be gratifying for both the volunteer and also the uh, people who are suffering. So a sharing of uh, some time of the day with the elderly people or with terminally ill people will bring a lot of psychological relief and it will de-stress them and that will definitely be satisfying for the volunteers. So that even if the patient is completely bedridden and cannot be taken to a hospital, there should be somebody in the community who can come and provide the basic palliative care services which can improve the quality of life of these people to a great extent. More and more people should come forward and volunteer for community-based palliative care.